Hi, Lee. How's it going? You okay? All good. Uh, two two nil wins in your first uh, camp as interim head coach. Could it have been a, a better break? No, I think it's it was it was imp obviously important that we we got the results. But more importantly for me, it was important that we had the performances. Um, you know, you want to you want to um, you want to stand at the side of the pitch, enjoying watching the team play. Um, you know, attacking, um, being exciting. Um, and I thought I thought we had that over the. Um, the two games, you know, to score to score four goals um, in two games is good. I, st I still think we could have could have done better. I think we've come up against um, two really resilient teams, two excellent goalkeepers. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction. Great, uh, that's Rob Dawson. Hi, Lee. Rob, um, right? Got to ask you about Harry Kane. Um, extraordinary, really. That. On an occasion like tonight, he, he, he scores two goals of that calibre. Yeah. What do you say about him? Um, well, f first of all, it's it's brilliant that he's he's got the hundred caps um, tonight, and then to, to score the two goals and the way that he took the goals, um, you know, outstanding. Um, not surprising, you know, to see him in the short space of time that we've we've worked with him, the the, the standards that he's got, the level that, he's got, that he produces every single day. Um, on and off the pitch, um, you know. Hopefully, we'll get all the all the plaudits tonight. Um, we were very lucky to have him. I think the um, he's definitely he's definitely performed on this camp the way I've seen him perform for Bayern this season. Um, he looks very um, very motivated to to keep doing it as well. So, which is can only be good for us. He's talked about targeting a hundred goals for England. Is that possible? Do you think? I would imagine so. Yeah, I think it's um, you know he's you know he's he's, he's still. Getting in, into really effective positions, I think we've got a responsibility as well to keep keep giving him uh, the assists. And um, yeah, I think he's um, like I say, he's, he's took them two goals really well tonight. Maybe could have got three or four. Hey, yeah. Hayley, just staying on Harry, um, obviously a lot yeah. of the focus is on his goals. Yeah. But what about how he fits into the way you, you want to play football? Um, I suppose could you give a few thoughts on that and how you yeah. kind of integrate him? Well, I think he's, um, he's, he's, he's multifunctional. Obviously, he scores a lot of goals, and that's what he's known for. But the way that he can drop deeper and link the play, um, the way he, he creates you know, uh, overloads in different areas, you know, he's, um, he's obviously um, not only a great goal scorer, but a, a really good footballer as well. I think it's important that we, we have players around him when he does drop deep that are you know, running forward you know, and, and, and with pace. And um, I thought we, in the in the players that we had today, especially in the first half with with um, Bakayo and Anthony, and then you change them to for for Ebbs and um, and Noni, you know, you you you've still got that threat. So um, and Harry fits into that really well. Ali, I, I saw yeah. you early. Um, sorry, spoken about being out of your comfort zone, still yeah. not feeling not feeling comfortable. Um, do you how, how do you? think that feeling will, will go away. Do you imagine it will still be there next month? What yeah, will it I, still, take? I still have that feeling with the 21s, to be honest. I think it's the, the responsibility that I feel. Um, I just want the players to do so well. Um, and that pushes you because you want, to, you, want, you want to put them in a position where they're performing really well, um, playing to the best of their ability. Um, and that puts, you know, I, I feel that pressure uh, to make sure that we can create opportunities for them. Um, to be really effective in, in, in effective areas, and hopefully, um, we, we've done that over the last two camps, uh, two games. Sorry. Dan. Just on, on Harry as well. How important is it? You know, because he's such an important part in scoring goals and creating goals. But how important is it that we get a we get someone who is there for when he's not there in the future or when he gets injured? Yeah, I think that goes for for every position. I think you you always need competition. Um, you know. We, we we need that all over the all over the pitch. You, you know, I've, I'm, I'm thinking about the game tonight, but as, you know, it weren't long after coming off the pitch where I was thinking, right, we need to, need to start thinking about the next squad now and and how that might look, and and what players are, are going to be coming into form and and how that's gonna how that's gonna pan out. Um, so yeah, competition for places within this squad is um, is very high. Um, I think you will see some some movement. Um, I think it's important that we keep freshening it up. We keep um, keep moving the squad forward. I think we've we've got another two camps before the World Cup qualifiers start. So it's important that we're um, you know we're in a strong position. Okay, Ollie. 
Hi, Lee. How's it going? Um, yeah, good. Um, I watched the, the footage of um, Ashley Cole presenting um, Angel Gomez with yeah, his... Yeah, last night. Yeah, with, yeah. His, with his cap. And I noticed that he said, you know, out of everybody, he was super happy that yeah. Angel Gomez had, had got that. Um, it's a simple question, really, but what is it about Angel Gomez that you yeah. like? I mean, he's obviously a very talented player. Is he yeah. a good kid as well? Yeah, he's a great, he's a great person. Um, Ash mentioned it. Um, he's so... I mean, it's, it's probably a silly thing to say. He absolutely loves football. He loves football. He watches football. Um, he's interested in tactics. He, he knows all the players in any league. Um, he's, if you ask him for any feedback, you need to be prepared that he's going to give you some feedback on the session or how we're going to build up all the positions. Um, he'll, he'll help in terms of, you know, he'll, he'll often say um, about some build-ups that he's done with other clubs or what he's played against because obviously he's playing in France so he sees he sees different things and um, yeah he fully deserves it I think it's it's good that the performance that you've seen today um, we've seen for over the last three or four years um, I think it's 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 important that he keeps keeps working hard like he will do but he keeps playing over in uh, over in France because it's um, you know it's going to be a really tough difficult squad to, to keep in and, and, to, and to get into. Thanks. Okay, uh, three more to go. Sam, Jonathan, and then at the back. Hello, Lee. You yeah. said at the start uh, when you were first appointed that you saw Trent as a right back and that's yeah. where you played him. He's, he's obviously had two very good games. Um, he's had injuries and obviously Carl Walker's in his position. Yeah. But how, how do you see his future with England? Trent's? Yeah. yeah. Um, how do I see his future with England? <laughs> um, well, I think I think I think he's he's definitely got the ability to be, um, you know, a, um, a player that's really important for the team. I think it's, you know, I want to, you know, if if we can try and try and really create some competition for places. I don't think, you know, I don't think with, uh, the player should ever ever come to camp thinking that the that the, the starting eleven is copy and pasted. I think. We have to be aware of what they're doing at the clubs, how, how many how many games they're playing, the level of games that they're playing in, and their form, um, and then hopefully you know picking picking a team around that. But um, I think Trent's had a, a really strong camp. I don't think um, I'm not surprised by it. You know it, the, the way that he started the season at Liverpool has been outstanding. So he's just taken that into into the um, the last couple of games. Jonathan, hi Lee. Um, yeah. Dublin was a, a particular type of test, but was this another type of test? You know, being at home, nil-nil, crowd getting a little impatient. Um, I mean, you you had to show control and patience. And, and yeah. did you say something at half time to reinforce your messages to the players? Um, no, I, well, I reinforced what what I thought they were doing in the first half in terms of um, keeping possession in around their box, making sure that we we're, we've got a little bit of a better shape behind the ball, so we're we're, we're avoiding being counter attacked. Um, playing with a little bit more um, aggression in terms of running forward, uh, making the opposition defend. I thought we were in some really good uh, positions and some situations. Just, just um, maybe an interception or a nick on the ball um, stopped us, stopped us scoring. But um, you yeah, have played in a lot of games like that. Um, well, coached a lot of games like that for England, where we have a lot of the ball and just fail to break down. But again, against teams that are that are very resilient, uh, that would be happy with a nil-nil. It's important that we just keep making them defend and keep believing that we're going to score. And um, I definitely felt that we did that. Hey, um, congratulations, hey. firstly, on another uh, incredible win. Um, you've started off your campaign with two pretty emotional storylines heading into the games. Um, firstly, how are you able to manage uh, satisfying those, satisfying the fan expectations with staying focused on the task at hand, and are you looking forward to, you know, play having a game of football without any dominating subplots? Yeah, I think um, I think I think with the with the squad selection that we that we picked, having the new players coming in, um, the the younger the younger players with the enthusiasm and the energy that they had, would would was always going to help um, the squad. And I was really wary of the fact that the the, the team stroke squad was coming off the back of a massive disappointment in the summer, and sometimes that, 
you know that I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been too shocked if there'd have been a bit of a hangover going into the into the two games. I think I thought the first game in Dublin was a, a brilliant game to come back to because um, anything less than a hundred percent focus in that game we could have been you know that could have been a really sticky game for us. Um, I know myself because I've I've been on the other end of that playing for Ireland. So and then tonight um, Wembley um, nil nil first half, but you could see with the reaction from the fans when when the half time whistle went that they were totally behind the team because they could see that we were pushing on and we were trying to score. And one of the benefits as well, I would, I would imagine as well, with this team stroke squad is that the changes you can make um, really help. I thought, I thought the, um, the players that, that came on um, as well as the players that, that were replaced uh, with some really positive performances tonight. OK, last two. One here and then Andrew over here. I missed his hand earlier. Hi Lee, just yeah. two very quick ones. Firstly, Esri Concer, is he okay? Yes, I think I think he is, yeah. I've not had a chance to, to see him because I've obviously been doing the press, but um yeah, he looked he looked okay when I when I seen him. And just secondly, you talked about maybe freshening the squad up next month. Do you yeah. plan to speak to Ben White at all? I'm not planned to, no. I'm not planned to. Because obviously at the moment he's declared himself unavailable. That's not something you might look to explore. Yeah, I, th I mean, we've we, we spoke about this in in the um, in the squad selection. Um, you know, every player that's that's eligible to play for England is is in with a, a chance. You know, as as far as I was aware, you know, he was asked he was asked to be not contacted. So, if that changes, then yeah, that will change. So the onus is on him. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think it's 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 important that you know we've we've got real competition um, in all over all over the pitch and. You know, the more players we've got available to pick from, you know, the, be the better it is. Thank you, Andy. Uh, hello, Lee. Congratulations. Hello. Uh, you mentioned the substitutes' impact and the threat of Ebbs. Um, I think he's probably had the most touches yeah. <laughs> of uh, his whole England career yeah. tonight. Um, can you just sort of sum up his performance and where do you see him fitting in with the England squad? Obviously, he was on the left and he was in the centre yeah, quite yeah. a bit. Thanks. Yeah, he's um, he's, a, he's a really talented player, as, as, as you as you've seen, um, he's trained so well. I think it's it's such a tough team to get into. Um, I think we have to be we have to be patient with him. I think he's um, you know he's going to be important. Um, you know at the minute, you know I really like the pace out wide. I think Ebbs is a bit different to, I mean, he's still quick himself, but you know Anthony's a different kind of uh, a different kind of wide player as is as is Bakayo on the other side. So, but you know the impact he's had in both games. Um, he's very good. He's a real threat from from um, outside of the box. It would have been great if he could have could have scored. He had a great, good shot, shot as well at Dublin in Dublin, which which you'd expect him to to score from. He's got such um, he's such a talented player and and such a nice guy as well. That yeah, hopefully um, you know be an important important player for the squad. On AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.